Have you noticed? When it comes to getting things done and managing your energy, it's really not how much you have to do, how big your to-do list is, but what? The excessive thinking about it, worrying about it. And that's our topic today. I'd like to take a deep dive in with you to explore some of the defining principles that will help you to manage your energy more effectively, to help you get more done in less time, and to stay focused and calm and more effective. So let's go back and revisit that. This is something I've noticed all throughout my life, and I'm sure you have too, that no matter how much we have to do on any given day, before we even get started, if we think excessively about it, worry about it, oh my God, I got so much to do, will I ever get it done? <laughs> Two minutes of that, maybe five, I'll give you that. And we're exhausted, we're drained. Have you noticed? What's the principles behind that? Let's take a look at two of the defining principles. First of all, we know in all these decades of study, the science teaches us that in our inner conscious levels, when we're on autopilot, and there's a challenge between imagination versus what's real, imagination versus willpower, imagination wins every single time. The brain, at our innermost inner conscious levels, I like to call them, some would say subconscious, when we have a vivid imagination and we think about someone or something as if we're there, the brain actually takes it as if it's for real, as if we are there physically, and all the chemistry in the body, all the chemistry in the brain changes to match that thought. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Case in point, have you ever had a dream that was upsetting and you wake up from the dream and you're what? Breathing heavily, upset, maybe the heart's pounding, maybe even sweating profusely, and you haven't done a blessed thing, but what? Think about it. That's what dreams are. There you lay in bed, and yet you had that feeling. Then when consciously we wake up and realize, whew, what a dream, pretty quickly we begin to slow down. So you could say, initially, you fooled your brain. Again, it can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So the key is being able to manage those thoughts, being consciously aware, being mindful of how this works so that we, with that self-awareness, can be more effective in managing it. It's a principle of worry and doubt that lead to indecision, and it sucks the energy right out of us. So think about it. Can you relate? Have you ever had a decision to make? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Or maybe you just felt like you had so much on your plate. Where do I begin? And nothing gets done. You find yourself moping around. I know I have. <laughs> you find yourself with lacking the drive, the motivation. Because why? You're not sure what to do, where to begin. Again, it's not so much the doing of things that wears us out. It's the excessive thinking about it, the worrying about it, that will do that to us every time. One other defining principle is, in addition, if you think of four simple, a progression of four simple steps, it begins with your thoughts. The thoughts are a catalyst, like a light switch to turn a light on or off, to feeling. And those feelings, when we have an emotion, a feeling, that, and it happens very quickly, <laughs> causes the brain to release neuropeptides, those neurochemicals, otherwise known as the chemical messengers of the body. And that affects our physiology, heart rate, breathing rate. It affects how, for example, when people are stressed, they don't breathe properly. Their breathing is very shallow. When people are feeling anxious or depressed, their breathing is in the chest, very shallow. And the brain chemistry changes to match that. So there's an increase if we're worried about something, thinking about, oh my God, how will I ever get this done? 
it causes an excessive amount of cortisol, adrenaline, and that causes us to go into distress mode. And that will affect the amount of blood and oxygen flowing to the brain, which causes us to feel it affects how we feel. It affects performance. If you're a performer, entertainer, whether you be a singer, a musician, or perhaps you're a salesperson giving presentations, or perhaps you're a student, you know as well as I do, you can rehearse, rehearse, study and study, and you're prepared, you know it inside out. But when it comes to the time of the performance, of the test, of the interview, of that challenging situation, if we worry about it, feel anxious, and we let our thoughts run away, you know, that monkey mind, oh, what about this, what about that, and what if this, and what if that, we choke. And I don't mean physically choke, you know what I mean. We don't perform as well. We make mistakes. We're not at our best. It's nearly impossible to be at your best when you're full of stress and feeling distressed and worried. And that's the challenge. So that physical change in the body affects performance and affects what? The results, how you do. So the thoughts, again, are like a light switch to feelings, those feelings, those emotions. It happens very quickly to cause the brain to release the chemicals that affect the physiology, which ultimately affects our performance. So can you see where I'm going with this? This is evidence-based. This is not woo-woo anymore. We know this to be fact. So really, the big, big challenge for all of us, and it's not easy, and I don't mean to minimize this. The principles are simple, they're direct, they're based on science. It's life <laughs> and the challenges of life and everything going on in our lives. So I'm with you. It's not an easy task, but it can be done when you have the right training, you have the skills, and you make a daily, consistent effort my friends. So you've got this. You can do this. These are one of the things that I do in the Silver Method classes. We call it the Immersion Experience of Life and Intuition System. Four full days from 9 in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. Most of the time, 60% is spent in meditation, dynamic meditation, where we're mentally rehearsing our best self, learning tools and techniques. So today I'd like to, obviously this is a, just a short video, but I can give you some takeaways, give you a little bit of a sample because I've been doing this work for nearly 51 years. I was blessed and fortunate way back in 1971. And when I learned these skills, I was uh, probably the CEO of Warriors Anonymous. Now I'm only a member. And I say I'm a member because I'm far from perfect. Nobody's perfect. There's no such thing. But man, no matter how much I studied, no matter how much I prepared, no matter how much I got, I was flunking out of college at Boston University in engineering. After two years of that and feeling really discouraged, I learned these tools. And one of the things I learned to do was how to manage worry, how to manage that excessive thinking, you know, and catastrophizing, which helped me to what? Those managing the thoughts helped me to be more at peace, to be calmer, and helped me to bring out my studies, you know, everything I had prepared, my best self. Well, after two years of that, learning the silver method and applying it, I graduated cum laude, nearly straight A's, and I was studying less, while also being a full-time silver instructor in the Boston area. At the time, I was the youngest instructor in the world. Now I'm the most experienced, not physically oldest. I'm, I turned eight, uh, 80, excuse me, oof, 70 this year, and there's still instructors are older than me, but you know what I mean in terms of experience with them. So I, I can't say it enough how important it is. I used to get headaches. As far as I know, not migraines, but constant tension type headaches. I'm convinced it was because of worry. Because when you worry, you go into stress mode. And when you release too much cortisol and all those stress hormones into the body, you go into the, the brain takes over. And then that state, that almost hypervigilant state, you get headaches. You have trouble sleeping at night. Have you been there? Can you relate? It's no laughing matter. So it can be challenged. The key, though, is we want to, by default, be in a state of calm, be able to turn it on. And that, full disclosure, takes practice. 
It's not a quick fix, but it can be done in as little as 5 to 15 minutes a day. Ideally, 15 minutes of meditation a day, once a day, be great. Three times would be ideal, and you'll see the difference. So that's one of the takeaways for you. Practice what you know. Practice your meditation technique. Another takeaway is focus on what you want. Instead of imagining giving energy to what you don't want and worrying about it, keep focused on your best self as if it's happened in a quiet, relaxed state. Ideally, like we learned in the Silver Method with the original Alpha Theta training starting way back in 1966. In this alpha, in terms of brain waves, very it's very simple, by the way. You do this all the time when you're sleeping. The key is being able to reach an alpha and theta state, which usually is sleep, but to be conscious, to be awake. Which, interestingly enough, now the evidence shows that when we're meditating, some forms of meditation, and most definitely what we do in the Silver Method, we reach this state where we learn faster, we're more open, we're more receptive, and we feel good, and we boost our immune system, and all of that makes it easier. So take a few moments before you're under the gun. Take a few moments in the morning, part of your morning routine, and mentally rehearse, as if you're there ready, some ideal scenarios, outcomes for the day, as if your best self has emerged. Second, add in some breathing. It's called the breath. It's breathing, by the way, from the Greek um, language, B-R-E-A-T-H-E, -E, means life, the breath of life. And breathing is so important. You notice it seems like so many people in personal development, thought leaders alike, philosophers, psychologists are saying what? Even in shows and TV and movies, breathe, breathe. It's a natural antidote to distress. And it plays a part. It's not enough by itself, but it can help you to manage your energy. So stop and pause and some slow, deep belly breathing. Take your time. Conscious, mindful breathing. And a third takeaway for you is to look back, reflect, kind of rewind, reflect, three R's. Rewind, reflect, and reframe. And part of the rewinding is looking back in your life to, hey, I've been there, done that. I've been in similar challenges before. I've had this kind of experience, not the same, but similar, and I handled it. And when you review that, even though it's the past, it causes at a cellular level, all your chemistry to change, your thoughts change, and it affects your brain chemistry, and you bring that with you through the day. It's the best thing to do in the morning as part of your routine. You can take that to the bank, as they say. So the been there, done that is reviewing past successes. It becomes a resource state for you, which is just the opposite of worrying, what if this, what if that? You get the idea, my friends? But the fact that you're still watching this video with me says a lot about you. Congratulations that you love yourself enough to give it a shot. You're open enough to learn something new. You've got this. Now all you need to do is each and every day apply this a little bit at a time. And if you do it over a few months, you'll be firing and wiring your brain. You'll be creating new neural patterns. And that's what takes time. And I can tell you, I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people. My name is Ken Kasha. I serve as the training director in the Silver Method. And you may know me from that. I'm the guy that Jose Silva selected out of a thousand global instructors. This is 1984 to join his international staff to do advanced trainings, to certify and develop our instructors, new instructors. And I was one of four, and he, the founder, was one of them. What an honor, what a blessing. I, I, you know, I feel such gratitude and joy in my heart. I tell you this because this is not new for me. I've, my whole life has been groomed to do this, to work with grads. When I started in 71, I spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours throughout the month, month after month, working with people who've been through the training, getting to know what holds them back, what works. I created a program called Silver Mastery. It's an advanced program that builds on that foundation based on that. So I can tell you, I know what I'm talking about, and you're in good hands. And So please, just make the effort. Take care of yourself. And remember, you're far better than you give yourself credit. And it's my hope 
that you know, do good, make a difference, make your contribution, have fun while you're doing it, and thrive. And if you would like to find out more and go even more deeply into this, I invite you to check out my website, Silver Method of Connecticut. In short, Silver Method CT, C for Charlie, T for Tom, dot com. Check us out. I'd love to meet you, shake your hand, although nowadays we're doing virtual, but soon we'll get back to in person.